this is your Game of Thrones news update, where I take what I consider to be the most important Game of Thrones news from the past seven-ish days, and I share it with you while enjoying my Saturday adult beverage, which today consists of lemonade, strawberry, Sprite Zero, and the tears of those orphans we talked about last video. There's also a giveaway at the end of this video, as well as always, there are spoilers for season seven of Game of Thrones, so if you don't want spoilers, please don't watch this video. Have a majestic day, and remember, you're never fully dressed without your smile. First off, Connor McGregor. I talked last news video about how there were rumors that McGregor had a role on Game of Thrones. The Ultimate Fighting Championship president, Dana White, talked about this rumor saying, I knew that a few months ago that they were interested in putting him in the show, and I'm glad he did it. The current rumor is that McGregor will play a cameo role as one of Euron's pirates on the ship Silence with minimal screen time. So if you hate McGregor, that's good news. I never heard of him before this last news video, so I don't really have any strong opinions, but it might be a fun cameo for fans of him. Next, the Wolf Hill Quarry in Northern Ireland is still happening. In the last news video, I talked about how Kit Harrington was spotted on the set, and it's believed what the set is, is it's beyond the wall, and it's when Jon takes a small search party to find a white to bring it back to the queen or queens to prove to them hey, the others are a problem, and they actually exist. Well, recent pictures show the Hound, Tormund, and Jorah's actors all hanging out in that area, which ties into the leaks that those characters, along with Jon Snow, would be going beyond the wall together on the mission. Besides being uber cute together, it again adds more weight to what we've been hearing. A fun add-on, the director in charge of the second to last episode of the season was also seen in this area with the actors. So this could be a huge action sequence for the penultimate episode. They get the white, things go sour, Daenerys rescues them, but loses a dragon in the process, as the leak stated. Then the last episode, we see the wall coming down and the Night King flying on an undead dragon. And us pissed that we have to wait another year to see the devastation he's going to bring. More images have come out of the ambush on the Lannisters, and I talked about this last news video, and I will say it again, I feel like every news video, I talk about this fucking ambush. So if you've been with me for weeks or months now, I'm, I'm so sorry. For everyone else, if you're not familiar with this ambush, what it is is the Lannisters and their forces, they attack Highgarden, which is the seat of the Tyrells, as a fuck you for joining up with Daenerys, and as they're leaving the castle with wagons full of loot, Daenerys and her forces attack them. New images show both Dothraki and Lannister soldier corpses. Just look at those sexy pictures. And notice in these the smoke. It's being reported all the smoke is from a dragon or dragon's attack. There have also been rumors about an anti-dragon weapon being made, much like Dorne had during Aegon's conquest of Dorne, but rumor is it fails terribly. We'll see. Caceres' old town is being prepared for what many of us are assuming is King's Landing. The shooting here is only two days, and the watchers on the wall produced a map showing the filming locations in the city, stating the mere two days of shooting could be done in an unbroken take. As both Amelia Clark and Peter Dinklage have been spotted in the area, could these two be doing a victory march through King's Landing? Is this what this scene is about? I mean, it's almost guaranteed at this point that Daenerys takes King's Landing, and then the others become the main threat, and then in the last season, they just kill tons of people. And I mean, a ton by... Game of Thrones standard. I do want to say Amelia and Peter being in the area doesn't mean that this is a victory march. Peter could be there for more filming of the scene where he and Davos escape with Gendry. A skiff on a bench with Davos's name on it has been spotted. Amelia could be in the area for some other scenes or to finish with the ambush scenes. Of course, the dragon simulating team is nearby too. So maybe this is a victory march or maybe for something else so many maybes. Ellie Kendrick, who plays Mira on the show, did an interview with Inverse, and she shared a few things, including her desire to learn more about her character's family history. Saying, of the side stories, I'm really intrigued by Mira and Jojen's parentage, who the Cranog men are, who Helen Reed is, because we haven't really seen him. I've got no idea, but I hope we get to a place where we can find out more about their backstory. It's so mysterious. And in the books, Mira has a trident and a net. That's how she fights people. And they eat frogs. They're like these crazy kind of characters in the books. I want to find out more about the Kronog men and the weirdness going on with them. She also talked about fan theories, stating, I don't really get as involved in them purely because it would drive me mad because I've got no way of knowing whether it would be true or not because we genuinely don't get told. The secrecy is so intense. 
Sometimes I wish I could give people answers when they're like, is this theory true? And I'm like, I don't know, it might be. I mean the Jon Snow and Mira theory. It would be lovely for me if it were true, because it would be a really interesting thing for Mira. But I haven't been told anything about it. I think what we've been told about Jon's parentage would imply that it kinda disproves the theory. But it's impossible to know with these things. Finn Jones also recently did an interview with Vulture where he shared a bit about his character, and if you've ever seen or heard a Finn Jones interview, he's a huge book nerd, so I really encourage you to read or watch any of his interviews because they're always a lot of fun. So in his interview, he said that he believes that Oliver, the boy that threw the accusation at him, is dead. He doesn't believe that Oliver survived after he threw the accusation out. He also talked a little bit more about his character, saying, A lot of people said, Oh, Loris is weak. Why didn't he stand up for himself? He's supposed to be a warrior. All this shit. The show didn't show much of Loris's torture, so it might be hard to find empathy in his situation. But when you get into the mindset of what it must be like to be down in those dungeons, he would have been abused. Pretty badly abused. I think a Theon level of abuse went on down there. His spirit, his body, and his mind were broken to such a drastic extreme that he was willing to do just about anything to make it stop. I believe what happened is they gave Loris a speech to read and said, Look, you just turn up on the day, say this, and then you'll be free. So the way I played it, the speech that you hear me do, those weren't my own words. I was pretty much forced against my will to deliver that speech. There's a resistance there because it's humiliating for Loris to have to denounce his dead boyfriend, his family, everything. It goes against everything he is, but he had been pushed to his limit and he saw no other way around it. He had to go through this terrible, embarrassing ordeal, but he thought at the end of it, he might be able to restore himself and go back to Highgarden. He was so brainwashed. He also talked about how he'd like the series to end, telling Vulture, I've had this theory for a while, but I think there needs to be a message with the end of Game of Thrones, you know? I think what needs to happen is Ice and Fire are going to go to war, a huge war between these two factions, and I think in that war, they will destroy themselves. There will be complete chaos, complete destruction. It'll just be a war-torn map. And I think out of that winter carnage, spring will follow. And what we'll see is power being given back to the individual realms. I think the Iron Throne will be dissolved. A small council will be set up. Not to take power, but to give power back. Hopefully a more democratic and more progressive era will arise on Westeros. I think that's a really nice positive way to end the story. And I think we need that right now. The world is a really fucking weird place right now. And we need someone telling a hopeful, positive, progressive story about politics and power. Why not let it be Game of Thrones, one of the most watched shows, if not the most watched show, in the world? Have a real powerful statement that the power should not be in a throne or in one centralized pinnacle of power. The power should be in individual democracies, in individual communities. Power should be with the people and not with some politician or some heir to the throne or some madman. Fuck that. The world's dying. We really need to look at ourselves and decide what's next. Thrones would be the perfect platform to send a progressive message because right now, our politicians aren't telling us any truths. It's hard to find a good, meaningful message. So I think it's up to the storytellers, television shows, and films to have an impact on the world conversation. Is that not what film and television is for? And if not, what is it for? So I really like that he's super passionate about A Song of Ice and Fire and Game of Thrones, but what do you think? What do you think about his proposed ending for the show? Giveaways! Giveaway winner from last week who captioned this photo is Gaming with a White Guy, who wrote, When your brother and sister are fucking in the other room. Ugh. New giveaway for your chance to win a $15 gift card to Amazon. All you have to do is like this video, so hit the thumbs up and answer in the comment section below. Why was Frosty the Snowman smiling? I really want to know. So write your answer in the comment section below and then I will pick a winner and I will announce it next news video. All right, thank you so much for watching. Please like this video, subscribe, and only you can prevent forest fires, but you can also start them.